Diaz is a renowned journalist. She's a best-selling author and advocate who was even on Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World list. Yes. Would you please welcome Gretchen Carlson. I'm just a fan of yours because you're just a badass woman, <laughs> number one. Well, thank you. But I remember uh, when, you know, you hosting The View and being on The View, you had honored Barbara Walters yes. and you said that she inspired you. Well, who did she not inspire in television? Absolutely, right? yes. I mean, she was such a trailblazer. And I believe now that it's our role as women to carry that on with younger women, Definitely. right? Definitely. And that's what I do every day in my life now, not only as a journalist, but with all the advocacy work that I'm doing to make workplaces safer for all of us. Um, and that, I'm, and this is why I really admire you. Thanks. But it was so funny, because I'm looking at the picture, and everybody, <laughs> you all came out, everybody came out to honor Barbara. But I, I, was, I was, where are you at? on this, because I, I Oprah said your name. Well, because so we all walked out. Okay. And funny story here, and you're gonna relate to this because you're also short. Yes. Right? I am behind Gail. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not in the photo. So when Barbara passed away and they were showing this video, right. and all my friends were texting me like, where are you in the photo? And I'm like, welcome to being five foot three, okay? That's right, because Gail is tall. Yes, girl. <laughs> I know, I know. You can That's relate. That's your conversation. Yes, I can so relate. That's why I always, <laughs> even with my wig, I'm like right up in front because I'm so, I'm so short. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, it's so funny because I heard that during the holidays you had done something scary and thrilling at the same time. <laughs> at the same time. So because of COVID, we were supposed to go on safari years ago, but we finally yeah. did it with my husband and my children. It was a trip of a lifetime. <gasps> you know, it's so hard to impress teenagers. They're I mean, not impressed by anything. They're not impressed by anything. So I just had so much joy watching the faces of my children be in awe of seeing how nature is all put together and these yeah. beautiful animals right there in front of you. Now I gotta say when the lion is like literally two feet away, I'm the scared one. Yeah. I'm like, are you sure it's not gonna jump up into the Jeep, you know? And these guides were fantastic and um, we had a trip of a lifetime. And we also got to see Nelson Mandela's okay. down in Cape Town. I really wanted my children to have some historical perspective of apartheid and, yeah. um, and all the work that Nelson Mandela did. So it was a combination of fun and education. All of that. I always wonder when they're in the truck, is this, do you have enough gas in, in case you know you don't want this car to stop? Because I saw Beast with Idris Elba. Oh that my one, gosh. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a good thing to see before you go on safari. Not at all. Yeah. You know, it, it's, I want to ask you this because I'm going through it with Jeffrey. Your daughter is in college. Yes. And your son is about to go to college. Yes. You are now an empty nester. So y'all clapping, but I'm tears over here. No. How do you feel about being an empty nester? Yeah, well, I'm almost going to be in about six months because Ooh. he's a senior in high school. And it was hard enough with my daughter but then I started thinking, what am I gonna do when they're both gone? But I do have a dog and I have a husband. <laughs> <laughs> now you gotta get to know both better. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> It'll be hard. I mean, it, 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 I think that it's just life changing for them and also life changing for parents. Yeah. But I'm so busy with all the stuff I'm doing that, you know, there's, there's a happy medium. Right, so you have things to do. You got, so you got your husband, you got your dog. Does your dog do like crazy tricks? <laughs> no, mine does. I know you're such a dog lover. I am a dog this lover. This is Bella. Yes. And she is a Legato Romanalo, which means Italian water dog. In Italy, they hunt truffles. Really? Yeah, I always say, why do I not have truffles in my backyard? <laughs> um, but she has a new trick. Yes. I've noticed this year, when I come home, she runs to the front door and she runs back. She, she only does it if a delivery person has been there. Oh, like when they deliver the packages. Yes, so she's telling me, somebody was here for you, Gretchen, or mommy, yes. right? Yes. And it took me about three weeks to figure out that she was actually doing this. I'm like, you are so smart. They're really, <laughs> really smart. Yeah. Yeah. See, you may not have gotten the truffles, but you got that corn scrubber <laughs> on your foot that you wanted from Amazon. Well, or all the things my kids are ordering. Exactly. Yeah. So she's doing, she's doing what she's supposed to be doing. Exactly. Now, your movie Bombshell, which I loved, I went to see Bombshell, and um, Nicole Kidman played you. 
Nicole Kidman played you in Bombshell, and the miniseries Loudest Voice uh, were out. They were both based on you. When you, when, you know, when your kids saw this, did they have any kind of reaction to seeing this about you? <laughs> yes, so we decided to go see Bombshell in the theater, but we had to be yeah. incognito because I didn't want anyone to know that you know, I was actually there seeing it. So I said to the kids, now, if your characters come up, you need to not say anything. So we all wore baseball caps, we went into the theater. Of course, I'm silent. But the minute that their characters came up, they're like, that doesn't look like me at all. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I thought we were gonna be quiet in here. <laughs> but the interesting thing is, Sherry, that you know, I couldn't participate in either of these productions yeah. because I have something called a big fat NDA. Oh, that's a non-disclosure <laughs> you know, non disclosure. So I couldn't consult at all. I can't even tell you if there was an accurate portrayal Because that's of what I wanted to know when I was watching Bombshell. Did Gretchen have any say-so? No, and, 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 but you know, here's the thing. I don't even own my own truth, which is why I'm doing so much work now to make sure other people own their own stories. Yeah. But I really feel like these productions were beneficial because people who saw them probably felt courage to also come forward. And so for that, it's, you know, it's been a beneficial process. I, I love this, of what you did and how courageous you were. And, and, you know, you've always been advocating for women's rights. And I know that you were the driving force behind two bills that were signed by the president. Could you tell us about those bills? Yes, not one, not one, but two. Well, you know, Sherry, the biggest decision of my life was to come forward with sexual harassment claims at Fox yeah. News against yeah. the former chairman and CEO, Roger Ailes. And I started hearing from thousands of women across our country, yeah. and they said the same thing not happened to them. They not only came forward and were punished and pushed out of their jobs, but they were silenced for the rest of their lives. Mm. And I'm like, no way. I'm going to roll up my sleeves and I'm going to do something about this. So I worked really hard for the last six years. I passed two bipartisan bills last year. In both yeah. of the, 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 the branches. In, in, in the House and the Senate. And so I was with the president in March to sign the Ending Forced Arbitration of Sexual Assault and Sexual Harassment Act. Yes, <laughs> yes. And in December, the Speak Out Act. So what this means now is people don't know what they're signing in their workplace contracts. No, you don't. They have NDAs on their first day on the job. They also have something called forced arbitration, which means you can't go to an open court. On your first day, you sign this paperwork or you click on an email and agree to it. And so you're silenced before anything has happened to you. Right. Then when it happens, you find out that you don't you have own no your rights. own truth. You have, no, you have no rights. So now at least for sexual harassment and assault, they can't do that to you anymore. Gretchen, thank you. But we're not done. Okay, you still have more work to do on this. We have this. more work to do because at Lift Our Voices, my nonprofit, we're trying to stop silencing for all protected classes, for race discrimination, gender, LGBTQ+, <laughs> age, disability. So we have a lot more work to do. I, you know, it's so funny because I think there's a lot of women who things happen and they're afraid to speak out. And you've done this, you've been through it. Is there any, anything that you can give women who are struggling and don't know what to do? Yeah, it's such a personal choice, Sherry, to come forward because courage is, it's not something that you just decide the night before. Yeah. I mean, you have, it take, took years for me to build up the bravery. So I say that first and foremost, personal choice. But we're told to go to HR. I would advise you to not do that first. <laughs> um, really seek legal counsel. So get your team together first. Get your team together. And also, you know, gather evidence because we still live in a he said, she said world. Okay. And you need to have evidence and bring it home because I can't tell you how many women I've spoken to who had evidence, but then they were fired and they couldn't go back to they their They couldn't office. go back to get it. Okay. So those two things. I wrote a book, Be Fierce, that's really a guidebook for all of this if people are going through this right now. It's called Be Fierce. That's what we fierce. have to go get. So get your team together. Yes. Get your evidence together before you go. And it, so have all of that in place. Yes. All right, and it gives you a, some confidence in order to go forward. It's still so hard, but the work I'm doing is also to try and change culture so that we don't punish people for simply having courage. Right? Gretchen, that's why I say you're a badass over here. <laughs> Thank you. Gretchen, you are working hard for women, and we so appreciate you. Thank you so much. You have to come back because I want to talk so about the book. Uh, thank you for being here, Gretchen Carlson. And go get our book, Fierce. <laughs> Definitely. Up next, Funny Fails and Mislabeled. Don't miss it. Gretchen Carlson.